Hey everyone, welcome back. We are talking about SuperCycle. And no, we are not talking about iPhone SuperCycle or 5G SuperCycle. We are talking about Auto SuperCycle. See, part of my portfolio, or I should rather say a big part of my portfolio, is in EV industry. So when I was doing my research, I came across some facts, some data, which made me believe that there is a huge auto super cycle right around the corner. In this video, I'm going to show you some facts, some data that I collected in my research, and which auto manufacturer are going to get benefited from this super cycle the most and the reason behind it. But please do me a favor and watch this video till the end. And if you get anything out of it, then do me a favor and hit that share, subscribe and like button. Thank you so much for all the support and all the love that you have shown in the previous videos. Okay, without any delay, here's my screen. So what I have done is I have divided my research into three different parts. First of all, let's look at some of the recent stats that came on CNBC. So CNBC recently reported that about 25% of the car in the US are at least 16 years old and vehicle age hits record high. So what does that mean? So that means that on an average, one in four cars and trucks that you pass are over 16 years old. That's a huge number. An average age in US for any car is 12 years. So you can imagine that 25% of the cars are over their average age. What does that mean in numbers? So right now, there are about 287 million vehicles on the road. That means 25% of it is 71 million vehicles are over 16 years of age. You can see that 12 years is an average age and about 71 million vehicles are over that by number of years. So you can see where I'm going with this. I feel in the coming years, as we go probably like 2022, 2023, those vehicles is gonna get older and we could see a transition of a super cycle or auto super cycle. And why is this such a big deal? But before I go in more detail, let's look at some of the stats from other countries. So average age of a car in the US is 12.1 years. Average age in UK is 8.4 years. And average age in China is five years. So you can see how there's a difference in average age of the cars. But where it gets really exciting is that if you look here, most of you are probably aware of it, that New York and California has actually banned ICE cars by 2035. And by 2045, all medium, new and heavy duty commercial vehicles in the US are also need to be electric. So you can see that how transition is taking place. Now US overall has not come out and said anything regarding the banning of ICE cars, but New York and California have said that they're going to ban sale of ICE cars, not ICE cars on the road, they can stop that, but selling of new ICE cars or gas powered cars by 2035. Now, if you look at the countries, actually some of the countries are very aggressive in this. UK has said that they're going to ban ICE cars, new ICE cars, of course, in 10 years, which is by 2030. They're going to ban that by 2030. Then China also says plans to phase out conventional gas burning cars by 2035. But some of these countries are really aggressive. Look at that, UK, 10 years, in 2030, they're saying that they are not going to be selling any gas powered car. This is huge. China is saying by 2035, they will not be selling any gas powered car or they will phase out of the gas powered car. So with all this news coming out, what does it mean for numbers? So now look at some of the numbers and where things get really exciting. So China reported in one of these reports that their EV growth in 2021 is going to be 51% as compared to 2020. This is huge numbers. EVs will represent one third of car sales by 2025 in China. That's massive. So if you see here, China's overall car consumption per year is between 20 to 25 million. As you can see, it's staying between that number right here. So China is consuming almost 24 to 25 million cars a year. Out of that, one third will be EVs. Those are huge numbers. If you see here, just in 2021, they're estimating that China is going to produce and ship. Some of them will be for their own consumption, but some of them will be shipping out 1.9 million EVs. And as you can see here, I'll just do a, a quick close up. The Chinese market would ship 1.9 million EVs, marking a 51% surge in the total market and a 9% growth of EV market in the overall automotive market in China. That's big number, 1.9 million EVs being produced and shipped out by China. Okay, now let's look at some of the top 10 EV manufacturer in China. Tesla, still number one, okay? then BYD, then SAIC Motor, Volkswagen, GM with SAIC Motor, NIO, Xpeng, Li Auto, WM Motor, and Geely. These are the top 10 manufacturers. Now, we probably have heard up till here, 
I have not much heard about these two, so I'm not sure about their volume. But as you can see, number one spot, Tesla, US auto manufacturer in China. Things can change over the next few years, but right now Tesla is maintaining the lead. All right, so now let's look at some of the numbers in US. According to this research, by 2030, there will be 25 million EVs on the road in US. I'm not saying sale, but 25 million EVs operational in the US. If you look at the numbers, they are predicting, and I'm gonna, just gonna do a quick close up here. So they are predicting by 2022, about three million EVs will be on the road, okay? Now, if you kind of go over here, they are predicting that in just between 2020 and 2021, there is an increase of about two million car more produced just alone in 2021. So the appetite for US for cars is increasing. Why? Because the average age of a car is 12 years, and 25% of the cars on the road is 16 years or older. So you can see it's all making sense now that why US produced 2 million more cars or consumed 2 million more cars in 2021 as compared to 2020. And that's what they're predicting, but I feel they're very close to the numbers. So you can see because average age is higher, because there are more older cars on the road, and that's why we are seeing this more production, more consumption of the cars in the US market. Okay, so there's another report that predicts that US EV market sales to rise to 6.9 million units by 2025. Look at this, right now, if you look, the numbers are so minuscule, so tiny of EV sales that's happening in the US. By 2025, which is just four years, it's not to, you know, I'm not talking about 10 years out, just four years, by 2025, almost 7 million units of EV sales, just EVs, in 2025. And if you see here, it all makes sense because by 2030, they're saying that we are going to have about 25 million EVs on the road. And if you look at the sale, the green is where it says annual sales, see how it's increasing. I think this is conservative. I feel more and more auto manufacturers are going to have a offering of more and more EVs, and this number is going to go up. There are two reasons why I feel this is really, really possible that we could double this number and by 2030, we could have a sale of about 10 million EVs in US. The reason I recently mentioned, 70 million vehicles. Now that includes everything. I'm not talking about just cars. That includes trucks as well. But majority of our cars are 16 years or older. So you can imagine that at the end of the life, when a user is now sitting down and deciding on which car to buy, today they can just say that, you know what, I'm just gonna go and buy a gas powered car. But mark my word, Two years from now, they are going to sit down and question again, why should I buy a gas powered car? A car which is going obsolete. A car which will be expensive to run, expensive to maintain, and of course, it's not futuristic. So I feel we are right at the infancy, and I always talk about the S-curve, right? And why I say Tesla is sitting right here at this time. Because from here, it's gonna go exponential for the next 10 years for Tesla. And the reason why I bring Tesla, because they are number one right now and they have everything, they have done everything right to be in that path. Okay, so now let's look at some of the other factors that is going to solidify my claims even further. So if you look on their screen here, the average price of a vehicle is about $40,000 okay, right now. Now let's compare a Model Y. So Model Y, which is long range, is about $52,000 right now. Now I added FSD, some people will get it, some people will not. But let's assume that, of course, you want something that's going to appreciate in the coming days. So let's say that you get FSD. Now the purchase price of a car is 62490 Then they have the gas saving, then they have potential savings, and the price come out to be about 58190 This does not account for the federal tax credits because President Biden just announced that. It's still in works. That's why it doesn't show anywhere on the federal tax credits. So when these credits will kick in, Tesla buyers will get about $10,000 off on their EVs, up to $10,000 off, depending on your personal tax situation. So let's say that you do get $10,000 off. Then now, all of a sudden, $58,000 saving or, or $58,000 car, so I'm gonna write it again, and now will become $48,000 car, okay? So let's look at this number for a second. $48,000 car. Now, average price of a gas-powered car, which is low-tech, no full self-driving, is about $40,000. If you get FSD, then you are going to pay $48,000 for a car. If you don't get FSD, minus $10,000, $38,000 for an electric car like Tesla, which has all the bells and whistles that you have to pay premium in the other brands. Okay, so now let's talk about the winners. 
who, in my opinion, I think is going to take advantage of this super cycle. So I feel every auto manufacturer who is in the EV space right now is going to take advantage of this super cycle. But there will be only few who is going to get the cherry on top. So here is a list of some EV manufacturer. By no means this is a complete list, but these are the companies that have entered this space and have some compelling news. Okay, so there is no doubt in my mind that you and I can agree on that Tesla is sitting at that number one spot. Tesla is going to have almost a million vehicles this year. Next year, they're going to double that. With Giga Berlin, Giga Texas online, I feel this company is sitting at such a sweet spot that it can eat the cake and also get the cherry on top. The second company is Neo. Because of the Chinese government, because Chinese government is backing them, because they have this expansion in Europe, they're doubling their factory. I just recently read a news where they're opening like Neo Park, which is amazing news for Neo and also for EV manufacturers in China. So I feel NIO is, is, is right there next to Tesla, which is going to really explode in the coming years. Lucid Motors, they still have to prove a lot of things. I know I got some hate in my previous video that I did on Lucid Motors, but hey, I go on facts. I need to see how many cars can Lucid deliver this year or how many cars they're projecting to deliver next year in order for them to eat this cake. Volkswagen, amazing company. Again, they are in the EV sector. They are growing rapidly. Xpeng, small company, but with the EV boom coming, all these companies are going to benefit. Ford, of course, they already have two EV offerings. So Ford is really aggressively working on it. GM, they are really aggressive in EV manufacturing. So all the companies that you see in front of you, they are going to be fine. They're going to eat that super cycle cake, but there are only few companies that are going to get the cherry on top, depending on how well they scale. And there is no doubt in my mind that Tesla is going to sit on that number one spot for the unforeseeable future. So I really feel that all these EV manufacturers they have a huge opportunity in front of them, especially with President Biden's new Electrify America plan by 2030, giving them huge boost to the EV industry. Any company who play their cards right, who have the cars, who have the factories, who have the service centers, who takes care of their customers is going to do well in this super cycle. So I'm really excited to see what these companies offer in the coming years and how this transition take place. And please do mention in the comments below what are your thoughts about the EV companies and where do you see them in the next 5 to 10 years. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you get anything out of the video, please hit that share, subscribe and like button. Until next time, you all have a wonderful day.